Well, hello there and welcome back. I'm Steve Geiger, your solar professor. And today, we've got another topic that I'd like to cover. And it is, let me get this thing working, um, part of my PV 101 series. And that is uh, balance of system components, or BOS as we call it in the industry. Um, this is actually a really important part of the system and you'll see why in just a few minutes. We definitely don't want to overlook this and we, and we certainly want to um, build uh, room in our budget for all of the parts and pieces that are involved in BOS. So let's dive right in and uh, get started. So um, you may be asking yourself, well, Solar Professor, what are balance of system components? Well, I got the answer right here. So. Um, this isn't a super long presentation, but I do have a few props to share with you, um, just to show you the, the real the nuances of, of everything involved, because it is actually uh, quite involved when we start talking about balance of system components. And the reason why is, if you look at uh, this particular slide, it is everything except um, really these two categories here. And I've broken it down for you uh, in two ways. Uh, number one is the UL, which is Underwriters Laboratories, of course, 1703 uh, listing of really photovoltaic modules, right? It's flat plate um, collectors is what we call it. So it's the solar panels, basically. The other UL, UL section is uh, 1741, and that covers inverters, converters, controllers, interconnection system equipment for use with distributed energy resources. In other words, it's your power producing components. So I have a couple of inverters shown here. I have an inverter charger right here. And then this is a charge controller for a, an off-grid or battery-based uh, type uh, system as well. And then that's a, a micro-inverter and, of course, an optimizer there. So these two categories right here is not what we're talking about in balance of system components. And to, to be honest, it's everything else. So let's dive right in and take a look at those uh, really quick here. All right, this is um, a picture from, uh, of course, you guys know my favorite book, uh, Photovoltaic Systems by Jim Dunlop. And um, this, is, this is the description that's in the book. Balance of system components include all the additional mechanical and electrical parts needed to connect and secure uh, the major components. And so we can see some of them in the pictures here. And what I'd like to do is kind of break it down into some categories that I've set up to show us you know, what's important when we are installing our system. As I've mentioned before, um, a lot of folks think, hey, you know, I want to go solar. Oh, it's not that hard. I just throw some solar panels up on the roof. Well, uh, truth is, it's, it's a pretty complex process when you go solar in, in regards to the permitting, in regards to all the little parts and pieces. Um, procurement's a big deal in solar too. Every little screw needs to be accounted for because if we're short, we're not going to be able to complete a job and that stops the crew on the roof and things like that. So uh, let's take a look a little bit deeper into this. Okay, so this describes what does um, BOS include. So I've got a couple of categories here, mounts and racking, and I'm going to show you um, some pictures and such in regards to that. Uh, boxes. So we have combiner boxes, J boxes, called junction boxes, uh, meter cans, disconnects, raceways, gutters, you know, uh, a lot of that is electrical type stuff. Um, conduit and fittings, of course, for electrical as well, and wire and connectors, and that is directly electrical. Then I set up a kind of other spe uh, specific or non specific uh, component category for us uh, to take a look at. So let's dive right in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, mounts and racking, and there actually is a specific UL um, uh, section for mounts and racking, and it's 2703 on here. And of course, you can always uh, remember, you can follow this uh, presentation. I have it posted as a PDF file on uh, my website, solarprofessor.info, um, and you can, you can find it there. Um, so, let's look at a couple of these things right here. We have... Uh, Roof mounts for composite shingle roofs. I also, over here, have roof mounts for tile roofs. Um, and both are common in, in our area here where I'm from in California. Um, ground mount systems uh, installed in various different ways. There, you, you, uh, Sometimes you dig a hole in the ground, you, you uh, put a pole in there and pour concrete in there as well. 
Um, you can use ground screws. There's other uh, devices in order to do a ground mount system, but generally they end up looking like this. Self-ballasted mounts. And what that is going to allow us to do is not even a mount, really. What it what allows us to do is to sit the solar system out on a roof and it's simply weighted down. And that way we don't have to penetrate the roof. We don't have to put holes in the roof. Um, over here, this is uh, just a pole mounted solar panel uh, system right there. There's a couple modules on there. Um, and this is a tracking one. So it will actually follow the sun. And of course, tracking, we would want that um, to get as much power production as possible. Track trackers are a little more expensive. They can be uh, motorized um, or they can be a passive type tracker and um, that's going to add cost to the system. So oftentimes I'll see those on a larger solar farm or utility based uh, type systems. And then we've got a couple of things right here. We've got um, our rail here and then we've got um, mid clamp here and then an end clamp here. I have a mid clamp for you right here. So. Uh, you can see with mid standard mid clamp um, will uh, connect to the rail in some way. I also have an L bracket, very common for us to use it in the industry, um, and that's to uh, hold the rails onto the mounts. You can see one right here. So there's the rail, mid clamp, mount, the whole, uh, or excuse me, uh, the rail, the uh, L bracket, and then it's sitting on the um, uh, roof mount right there. Okay. So, anyways, that is uh, mounts and racking. Let's uh, continue the journey this afternoon. All right, um, boxes. So we have uh, various boxes in regards to really the electrical side of BOS here. Um, combiner box is shown right here. And what a combiner box is doing, combiner box is different than a junction box, and, and this is why. Uh, you'll see, and this is a nice picture because it's showing um, the positives coming in, the reds. So this is a, um, a string system, uh, the DC based side right here. And what these are doing is they are fused. I actually have uh, one of the um, fuse holders right here. And you can see what that looks like basically. Uh, it's the same thing in this picture here. And it combines all of the positives right here. And that, if you, if you guys watched my uh, NABSEP prep video, um, it puts these, um, uh, these, these fused connections in parallel. So we're increasing amperage in this particular combiner box. And that's really important to note about, specifically about a combiner box, okay? And then, of course, the uh, negatives come in and then there's typically a negative bus bar and, and such. And, and we'll combine the negatives as well, but the biggest thing is, is combining those positives in there. Then you have, all the little wires come in and then a, and a big thick wires coming out of that. Uh, this is a junction box. So junction box on the roof, there's various kinds. There's metal ones, there's plastic ones. I have a metal one right here. Uh, different things you can use on the roof. Sometimes we'll hide them under the solar panels. You know, sometimes they're sitting out. It depends on your AHJ, um, what their requirements are, if they need to see it uh, out there or not. Um, usually what's happening in a J-Box, you can combine in a J-Box, okay? So we don't want to get it confused directly with a combiner box that has the bus bars and such in it. Um, but usually we'll do, we're doing a wire transition. So we're going from a specific type of wire, maybe it's uh, uh, THWN2 that is, that is in the conduit. And then uh, over here, these, this is the um, PV wire directly from the modules, right? And inside that, um, we'll have some connectors and such. And I'm going to show, show you guys connectors in, in just a minute here. But um, PV into the, into the uh, J-Box, and then we move um, down the conduit with a different type of wire, uh, typically THWN2 or THHN. Um, over here, we have a um, box for a meter. We call it the meter can. And so if we're, if we're doing, um, if we don't have a bi-directional meter on, on site, maybe we're setting up a dual meter situation with the utility so that they can uh, figure out uh, the difference uh, of what the system is producing and then what is being used at the, at the particular site. And so that would be um, what, what the meter can is used for. Disconnect, of course, you guys probably know what that is. That's simply a switch um, used for isolating uh, components and such. Uh, and then over here, uh, this is a, this is, these two pictures are a good example of a raceway. So this is a gutter right here and then all the wires go in here. Um, here's another, just a small, simple um, raceway type thing where the wires are inside of it, and that, that one happens to be uh, metal as well right there. Most of the raceways that I see are, are made out of metal. There are some plastic ones, but um, anyways, that gives you an idea there. Um, conduit, 
And fittings is our next category right here. Conduit's huge. We see that a lot in solar. Oftentimes we're doing retrofit solar systems uh, so that um, uh, the conduit is on the outside of the building. And it's also important to do a nice job with our conduit, making sure that we're um, at uh, horizontal and vertical um, angles and uh, making it look clean uh, and bending it properly and such. And so that's, there's, there's a little bit of an art to that. Um, and the electricians uh, you know, work on, on uh, most of that type of stuff. Uh, various fittings, we have some rain type fittings available uh, for the conduit outside, that's important. You want to make sure that you are buying rain tight if it's going to be exposed to water on the outside of the house, that's a big deal. Some inspectors will look for that and, it's, and it says UL listed on there and of course the packaging is going to say uh, rain tight, so that's important to know. Various different uh, types and sizes and such, um, we've got EMT. Uh, electrical metallic tubing is probably the most common one and there's rigid and there's uh, intermediate and then there's PVC and then there's interior PVC, the blue one here, we call it Smurf tube. Um, there, oh, I have a piece right here and so this is uh, flexible. Um, oftentimes we refer to it as liquid tight. You can see that I got some fittings on the end of that right there. Um, and so that's this one here, and then these guys, of course, wouldn't be. Some of these are uh, allowed to be exposed outdoors, these guys here and this one. And then, of course, these other ones are just interior only, uh, typically. Um, so we want to keep that in mind. Conduit's a, an important part of our BOS. Uh, more in regards to BOS. So this is our wire section. So we've got wire and connectors here. Various different types of wires. I mentioned here, this one says THWN2 right on it. Um, I would imagine that's the same type right there. Uh, large uh, wires, this is sun resistant, so this is going to be similar to our uh, PV wire. Um, it can be exposed to the elements in a limited nature. You don't want to just sit it right out there. Usually on the roof we, we are running conduit between solar arrays. However, underneath the solar modules there will be um, wire uh, like this uh, under there. Uh, and it's not exposed, it's covered. And that's, that's important to know. Um, various uh, sizes and gauges of wire. Here's a common one that we use. This is uh, THHN slash THWN2. You have to look at the wire itself um, to make sure that uh, you have the right type. You know, when you go to the store, make sure that, that you're, you're buying the right type. That's super important. And, and of course, that's going to be called out in the plan set. Um, what else do I have here? I've got some, uh, some fittings for us for um, uh, wiring into boxes and devices. Right here I would want to make sure that I use this um, to keep things rain tight again. Um, it could be in a, a junction box, that, that particular plug right there. Um, common here, these are the same uh, type of plugs, the MC4 connectors that are uh, on the ends of the modules right there. Um, terminal blocks, you know, we're going to see those in, uh, in combiner boxes, we're going to see those in main service panels uh, oftentimes. Uh, here's uh, various types of uh, terminals uh, as well. And then over here, don't forget the circuit breaker. Um, we, gotta, we make sure that the wire is sized properly and, and then there's a whole science to, to sizing uh, wire correctly according to uh, the National Electric Code or the NEC. And uh, circuit breaker is very an important part of um, our balance assistant components. All right, uh, a couple more here. Actually, this is our last category. Um, and I called this other specific or non-specific components. And over here, we're showing uh, some off-grid stuff. Um, batteries here uh, could be part of the BOS system. This is a, a meter uh, that monitors um, battery health. Um, it'll monitor the temperature of the batteries, it'll monitor the state of charge and, and such. Um, over here I got a, a couple of other measuring and monitoring devices here. This one is for uh, microinverter production. Um, over here we see a pyranometer right here that measures um, the solar irradiance. Um, out and sometimes they, they install these out at uh, large systems to, to make sure that uh, we're getting the most out of our solar system and, and then we can uh, gauge if it needs to be cleaned and how the production is working out and such uh, as well. This is a CT right here, it's called a current transformer and oftentimes we'll send a one wire through it right there and that will uh, allow us to um, 
what, what they do actually is they feel electromagnetic induction and they give us uh, an amperage um, reading basically and then of course uh, if you have a solar system set up, it'll help figure out what the overall wattage and production is of the solar system. This is actually the same technology that's on your um, uh, digital multimeter with an amp clamp. So that's, that's the same type of, uh, of thing. So, uh, I think we covered most of it. Um, so, you may be asking yourself, well, where can I find BOS components? And so there are several uh, ways that you can get your BOS. Solar suppliers uh, and solar component companies, they often have the big stuff. They'll have the modules, they'll have the inverters, um, off-grid type equipment, sometimes they offer the batteries. Sometimes they do actually get into really the nitty-gritty nuts and bolts um, uh, of the electrical components and such, but oftentimes it's more the bigger stuff. Um, so you would want to go over to an electrical supplier to get your wire and your conduit and the fittings like that and such. So we actually rely on multiple suppliers typically in the, in the solar industry. There are a few that, that do it all uh, in-house, but um, if you're looking for pricing, sometimes it's a good idea to use multiple suppliers. Um, local hardware stores too can offer uh, some of the, um, the fittings, the terminals, the conduit, the wire, things like that, as well as circuit breakers, they, they, they have those there. So anyways, um, I just wanted to, to create this video to give you an idea about balance of system components, what they are, how they're used, really how important they are. Um, always, we never want to forget too, and I like to include this if we're installing a system, anything uh, for safety. If we're going to use a, a harness system to keep us safe on the roof, you may want to consider buying a permanent anchor and putting that on the roof. and that could theoretically become part of the uh, balance of system components. So anyways, um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the overview of BOS. You know, as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. You can, again, go to my uh, website, which is uh, solarprofessor.info, and I'd be happy to uh, hear from you. Or you can always um, do a question on uh, the actual um, YouTube, ch my YouTube channel uh, as well. And I, I, I really do look forward to, uh, to hearing from you. And, uh, you know, please, please like my page and, and subscribe if, if you're enjoying the videos. Um, thanks for watching.